Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. This week, I want to talk about kind of striking a balance between talking as a dungeon master or referee and listening. <laughs> and also, we have a great sponsor this week. RPG Stories is launching the Kickstarter today, April 16th. So check that out. I'll put a link in the description. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So if you go back to the early days of this channel, it was started because a bunch of us were just kind of playing online and we recorded our games. That's kind of where the channel came from. And going back and looking at some of those early ones, not now, but maybe a few years back, and doing some editing, I noticed that, especially in the earlier games, there was a lot of long audio pieces that were simply me talking. Sometimes they were narrating things, so you know, describing what was going on. And sometimes who knows what I was saying, but I noticed that. And of course, if you're going to look at the wave audio wave files of a game, you know, you'd expect the dungeon master might speak the most, but those areas where the dungeon master is speaking, in my opinion, should be short. And then the players should be able to step in and add their bit to it. There's a couple of reasons why I think over narrating or talking too much uh, at the table as Dungeon Master can be an issue, and we can kind of cut back on that and improve our games. So what I'm going to do is kind of break down those in this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on this, whether you think maybe I should talk more or you should talk more or not. Anyways, let's jump into it. So first, we're going to start with something that maybe we don't think about that much, which is what we say, the things that we talk about influence what the players will do. And if you're like me and you want to run a campaign that's a sandbox, open world, lots of player agency, whatever terms you want to use for it, we want to try to avoid things that are going to push players down certain paths. And this is not an obvious thing. And you may not even notice it and your players might not even notice it. But if you mention something they are going to likely look into that thing. I talked about it a bit in a video in the past about NPCs. You know, you make that NPC and you decide to do a funny voice or have them some kind of interesting flourish just because in the moment it seems fun. And next thing you know, you're doing a couple of sessions having to flesh out this person's family and all that's going on and maybe even make adventures around them to make it interesting because the players went that way. And it really didn't have anything to do with the core concepts or core ideas of the campaign, right? It wasn't what the players were really doing. They were trying, you know, they were on a quest to find this magic sword, and now all of a sudden they're helping this family transport their cows, which could be really fun, but were, are they doing it because they think that you wanted them to do it because you made this NPC important? I think that can be the case. And of course, going back to that, if they get into the habit, that is the players get into the habit of waiting for you to highlight an NPC or an object or the bookshelf over there, they'll wait for you to do that because they'll be like, well, they're going to tell us what we should be doing. And we really want to de-emphasize that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have flourish to your NPCs or cool locations or describe stuff in a really fun way. But what I am saying is we need to be careful that we're not leading the players without knowing it, right? We want to make sure that we're presenting all the information as simply as possible so the player's actions will help with the world building. And speaking of world building, let me talk about my sponsor this week, RPG Stories. This video is sponsored by Brave Alice Games Kickstarter for RPG Stories VTT Wrath of the Devs. This is going to start on April 16th, which is the day this video launches. This is more than a map making tool and more than a VTT. This is a 3D world builder and it's already available on Steam. So this isn't like one of these projects on Kickstarter that you're going to sign up for and have to wait forever. As soon as the Kickstarter ends, you're going to be able to have access to what's available now, which is a massive number of tools that will help you build your world and run your games, whether you're playing D&D, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, any of those games, really. You have a dice panel and quest writing tools. It also supports 2D uploading and gaming. So what's coming in the Kickstarter is going to be a lot of cool features, character sheets and rule sets. There's going to be procedural generated scenes, which is pretty cool. That's actually one of the things I'm really leaning into here. You just say, I want a library and it'll boom, it'll give you a basic library to start with. That's going to save a lot of time. There's going to be 5,000 new models. 
You can export to Foundry and Roll20. What you have to remember here is that this is already available on Steam. So you can jump in now. As soon as Kickstarter is over, you'll be able to start world building. And as the features roll out, they'll just keep adding them to the product. So check it out. I'll put a link in the description below as well as a pinned comment. April 16th is when we start. So jump in and get in on this Kickstarter. It looks fantastic. So we've all been there. We're in the dungeon. You explain the basics of a room. You say, okay, you enter into this room. There's a chest over here on the wall. There's a tapestry. There's a bookshelf, whatever you describe. And then you stop. And the players just stare at you. And in this moment, this is where we need to make that decision. It's so easy for us to just keep talking, right? Because the players are thinking. You know, a while back, I was watching this video, and if I can find it, I'll put a link, but that is going to be unlikely. But Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers from the TV show, was being interviewed, I want to say on like David Letterman or something. This is ages and ages ago. And they had written a book. And they were talking about when they wrote the book that after each kind of chapter or section, they left, I want to say, two blank pages or something to that effect. And they said the reason for that was they wanted the child, because it was written for kids, to read through the chapter and then think about it. If they immediately started the next chapter on that next page, they'll just start reading it. The idea is pause. And that's what we need to do. The temptation, the silence is there and you want to keep talking. But the idea of letting the players have a minute to think about what they want to do. And if they're still staring at you, you can always say, what is such and such character doing? What are you doing? However you want to present that. And I wouldn't just throw it out there randomly because if you feel like you're stuck, ask a player in particular. Look at the player that doesn't usually talk that much <laughs> or the one that maybe is the one that might be interested in this. Let's say it's a library and there's a wizard in the group. You might turn towards the player playing the wizard and say, what is Presto doing, right? This way you can get them going. What we want to do is not fall back on more narration when the players aren't talking. What we want to do is get the players to ask us questions because this will tell us what they are interested in. And when they say their character is doing something, we can start to, I hate to use the word train, but start to influence the way that they ask the questions by going deeper. So, oh, okay, Presto is going to search the bookshelf. Okay, so when you say search the bookshelf, you mean you're going to look at what books are on the shelf? Do you want to move any of them? Are you looking in them? Are you going above it, below it? What are you doing exactly? Let them explain it. They might just go that, right? But over time, Presto's, char Presto's character, Presto's player will start saying, Presto's going to go to the bookshelf and look through the books to see if there's anything between the pages. They'll learn to do that because you're kind of showing them this is what you can do. You don't have to just say, I'm looking at the bookshelf. You can explain what you're doing, get into your character's head. What are they doing? And make sure that when they do that, you reward it. We want to reward that kind of stuff. So if they're searching, make sure you don't just go, okay, yeah, 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 you're looking at the books. Make sure you get into it and say, okay, these are the books and this is what you're looking at. Give them that moment because this will allow your players to understand that they're viewing the world through their characters, but you are just describing what they see. So imagine for a second that you are being brought into a room and you have a blindfold on. You've never been there before and your friend is with you and they're going to describe the room to you so you can get a sense of what it is. Well, that's kind of what we're doing, right? We're saying, you see this item, you see this item, you see that item. Then they might ask more questions. You might say, okay, there's a table in the room and they might say, is it a like a coffee table or is it a like a table against the wall? Is it a, a dining table? Is there stuff on the table? And you can dig into that. You may not be that big and just say a table. You might say a dining table. But what we want to do is let them ask the questions. Are they interested in the table or are interested in the bookshelf? That's what's important to us. What the players are interested in is what we want to narrate. The one reason why we do this is because somebody talking for a long period of time, and I learned this a lot. It's, it's more of a case when you're playing online, I think. But somebody talking for a long period of time, even if they're super interesting, can get a bit boring, <laughs> especially if you are not, your character doesn't have any stakes, right? It's the first time they've walked into this room. And if they're not looking for something in particular, then they're just getting an info dump. And most players won't just interrupt you. They'll be thinking that like, you'll mention a bookcase and they'll think, oh, okay, I want to check that. 
But then if you drone on for five more minutes, they might forget to check the bookcase, which was the original idea. So that's part of the thing. You don't want them to be bored, right, and zone out and start looking at their phone or, you know, whatever they're doing. But also the other reason why we don't want to give massive long info dumps is people will miss things. You might say there's a sword, you know, leaning in the corner and then there's also a bookcase and there's a table and there's a door and there's this and this. And then the players never look at the sword and you're thinking to yourself, but there's a sword leaning in the corner. Why didn't they look at that? Well, it's probably because they forgot. You gave them too much information. What we want to do is give information in a small chunks and again, have them ask questions. So you might say, you come into a room, you see a table in the center of the room set up for food. You see a, a bookshelf and hanging above the bookshelf is a sword. There's three other exits out of this room. Now let the players ask questions. Again, see how I keep coming back to that? This is the important part. We want to give them enough information so that they have to ask us questions. They don't have enough to act until they ask the questions. This will create a dialogue, which is ultimately what we want. So I would love to hear from you. Let me know about your techniques for kind of narration to keep it short, or maybe not. <laughs> maybe you want to have long narrations. And what do you do so the players do remember things? They don't fall under these problems that I mentioned here. I also want to thank RPG Stories for sponsoring the video. Please do check out their new Kickstarter link in the description below. And down there, you're also going to find a link to my Discord server. Join up over there. Great community over there. I'll talk to you soon.